know whether you've noticed it, but my talks to you have been one but after another. Sum up what I've said, and it's something like this. You've got to get the correct sight picture every time you aim at a target. But this correct sight picture is not enough. You've got to take the correct firing position. But the correct sight picture and the correct firing position are no good unless you squeeze your trigger with a steadily increasing pressure. But you've got to master rapid fire principles. Learn to coordinate so that you take your position, aim, and squeeze your trigger in smooth rhythm at a fixed speed. But even then, you won't necessarily hit what you're shooting at unless you adjust your sights properly for range and wind. Today, you're ready for one more lesson and one more but. You're not ready to start shooting live ammunition until you know how to zero your rifle. Now, no two men are exactly the same. No two men aim or hold their rifles precisely alike. And when a man shoots, he does it in his own particular way. No two rifles are exactly alike either. You can't see the difference between two rifles of the same make and model. But take my word for it. No two rifles have precisely the same effect on the bullets they fire. That means that every man must adjust his rifle for its little individual peculiarities, as well as for his own. For example, your rifle may shoot a little to the right, or a little low. Now the error may be with you, or it may be with your rifle. In any event, that error has to be found for each range, and your sight adjusted so that you'll hit exactly where you aim. There's one good thing about it. Once you know your zeros, you know them for keeps. As long as you've got the same rifle, those zeros won't change. So you keep them in your scorebook, and you fix them in your memory. They're your zeros, and you need them in your business. All right. How do you go about zeroing? In this company, you'll zero your rifle first at 200 yards. Well, I don't want you to pay any attention to the range scale on your rifle. It's not set, and it may be off a mile. Do this instead. Run your sight down as far as it'll go. Then, run it back up 10 clicks, because 10 clicks is the average 200-yard setting for all men and all M1 rifles. All right. You've taken 10 clicks elevation for your first shot. What about your windage setting for the first shot? To begin with, whatever the weather's doing, center your wind gauge. Set it so that the long lines of the index come opposite each other. And if there happens to be no wind, leave it centered. Let's see how it would work on a calm day. You've taken 10 clicks elevation for 200 yards, and your wind gauge is centered. You aim. You squeeze off your shot and call a dead center bull. And you score a four at 7 o'clock. Here. Now you've got to correct both your elevation and your windage. How much? You can tell from the dimensions of your target. At 200 yards, it'll be an A target. Your bullseye is 10 inches wide. It's 5 inches from center to the edge of the black. The 4 ring is 8 inches wide. And the 3 ring is 10 inches wide. All right. Your bullet hit here. Take the elevation arrow first. These lines are here to make it easier for you now. But you can do the measuring in your head. Here's your shot. Here's center. Your shot this much below center. That's five inches on the black, plus, say, not quite half of the four ring. Call it three inches. Five inches here, and three here. You're eight inches low. How many clicks of elevation to bring the strike up to dead center? Connie. At 200 yards, each click will move the strike two inches. Four clicks up to raise it eight inches, sir. Right. Now, you've already taken 10 clicks as your first setting. So when you take four more, you'll have a setting of 14 clicks. 
And if this should be exactly right, to bring your next shots up to center level, that would be your elevation zero for 200 yards. But remember that this is only an example. I'm showing you zeroing in its simplest terms to begin with, so you'll understand the general principle. Actually, when you go out to zero your own rifle, you'll be allowed several shots to make sure your setting is right. Your first correction may be perfect, or it may not. Your second shot will check it, and you may have to make another change for your third shot. The elevation zero for 200 yards may be more than your original 10 clicks, or it may be less. That's what you'll have to find out. Now let's go on with the problem. Four clicks brought this strike up eight inches. But that would make your next shot hit here. That's five inches to the left on the black, plus, call it, one inch in the four ring. Five plus one, six inches. You've got to move the strike of your bullet six inches to the right. How will you do it? Carol. Three clicks right, sir. Good. Three clicks of right windy. We've moved the hit four clicks, eight inches up, three clicks, six inches to the right. There is no wind blowing, so we started with the wind gauge center. And now you have a setting that ought to make the bullet hit where it's aimed. Ought to, I said, because this is still an example. And I've simplified it to make the figuring clear. But you've got to check your own correction by firing several shots before you can be sure of your zero. Now, let's see how we zero your rifle when there is a wind. You simply adjust your wind gauge to correct for the wind it's blowing. Once you've done that, you go on with your zeroing exactly as if you were on the range in a dead calm. Let's see how it works. Say you're firing at 200 yards again. So, you take 10 clicks of elevation. Now, this time, you have a 15 mile wind from eight o'clock. You start by making an allowance for the wind. What allowance will you make? Monaghan. The range in hundreds of yards, sir. That's two for 200 times the wind velocity, that's 15. Two times 15 is 30, divided by 10. Well, 30 divided by 10 is three. So you take three clicks, sir. Three clicks left windage. Good. Three clicks left windage to take care of the wind. As a starter, You've got 10 clicks of elevation for the 200 yard range. And three clicks left windage. For the 15 mile wind at eight o'clock. You're ready for your first shot. Correct position, correct sight picture, correct trigger squeeze. To make it simple, let's say you call a center bull again. You've disked before at four o'clock. You figure exactly as you did before. Elevation first. What's your elevation error? Field. I'd say the hit's about two inches below the bottom of the black, sir. That would be seven inches low. Right. Seven inches low. So what do you do? To raise it seven inches at 200, you'd want three and a half clicks, sir. You take four, sir. Correct. Four clicks up. But you've already got ten clicks. What does that give you? Your original ten clicks weren't enough for this rifle. You take four more, that gives you fourteen. So your elevation zero at two hundred yards is fourteen clicks, sir. Yes and no, Field. It's your elevation zero if your next shot proves that it is. But you've got to check it and check it again. Now for Windy. What's your correction? Walter. Well, sir, the, the hit's about halfway across the four ring. That's four inches, sir. The center is about five inches in the black. 
four and five, that's nine, sir. Good. Nine inches. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to take left windage, sir. How much left windage to move the head over nine inches to the left? Well, at 200 yards, takes one click to move two inches. Divide nine inches by two, that's uh, four and a half clicks. You take five clicks left, sir. Okay. Five clicks left. Now, what's your windage setting? You started with three clicks left for the wind. Now you're taking five clicks more. That's uh, eight clicks left windage, sir. Okay. Eight clicks left is your setting. Is that your zero? No, sir. Because three of those eight clicks are for the wind, and that doesn't count in your zero. Your zero is five clicks left, sir. That's exactly it, Walters. Do you all see that? Now, suppose you know that your zero is five clicks left. And the next time you go on the firing line, you have a 15-mile wind blowing from 3 o'clock, so that you have to take three clicks of right windage. How will that affect your zero? Jackson. That doesn't affect your zero at all, sir. Good. Do you all see that? Your zero windage is one thing, and your windage setting is another. Now, you know your zero is five clicks left, so you set your wind gauge at five clicks left. But you've got to take three clicks right for the wind that's blowing. You start from your zero setting and make your wind adjustment. In other words, you start at five clicks left and come back from there three clicks right. What's your setting then? Five left and then three right. That's three from five, sir. Two clicks left. Fine. You make your wind adjustment from your zero setting. Who doesn't see that? Hoffman? I'm sorry, sir. I don't, I don't get it. All right. Take it this way. Suppose your wind gauge is centered to begin with. First, you set your zero five clicks left. But you've got a wind from the right, and you take three clicks right to allow for it. You come back toward the center line again. What I want you to see is that you set your zero and correct from it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. The elevation setting is simple. Your original 10 clicks are the average setting for 200 yards. Your first shot shows whether it's too much, too little, or just right for your rifle. You make whatever correction you need to hit exactly where you aim each shot. Check it, and that's your elevation zero. Any other questions? Let's have another problem, another man, another rifle. We'll stick to the 200-yard range because it's clear and simple. But don't forget, you'll have to zero your rifle for 300 and 500 yards, too. The figures for these other ranges are different, but the principle is exactly the same. All right? Say you have a wind from 5 o'clock, and you estimate its velocity at uh, 10 miles an hour. What wind allowance will you make? Crandon. Ten miles an hour at five o'clock, sir? That would be two for 200. Times ten for ten miles an hour. Divided by ten. So the two tens cancel, and there's two clicks right. Do you agree with that? Matthews? No, sir, because the uh, wind is from five o'clock, and you make only half the allowance. One click right, sir. That's it. Remember that, Crandon. Half the allowance for wind from 1, 5, 7, and 11 o'clock. Okay. The wind gauge is centered to start with. You take one click of right windage. How do you set your elevation to start with? Falcon. Ten clicks up, sir. Ten clicks up from where? First you run it all the way down, sir, then ten up. Fine. Very well. You've taken one click of right windage and ten clicks of elevation for your first shot. Assume your aim and your call are perfect. Say you call a center ball. And your discs are three at eleven o'clock. 
What's your elevation correction? Hawkins. Looks like it's about six inches above the black, sir. So that's five inches on the black and six above. That's 11 inches. Okay, go on. Each click will bring it down two inches. So for 11 inches, I take six clicks down. That's six clicks off the 10 I started with. Six from 10 is four. Four clicks up from the bottom. You check it and if your next shots hit where you aim them, that's your elevation zero. Good. Now the zero windage. You've taken one click of right windage to begin with. Here's the strike. Link. That's about three inches out in the four ring, sir. Eight inches from the center of the bull. Uh, four clicks right to move it eight inches right. And you've already taken one click of right windage? So? So I just take four more clicks right, and that makes five clicks right. Uh, but that's not the zero windy, sir, because the zero is the setting you need if there's no wind. The zero is four, sir. If? Oh, yes, sir. If your next shot's check it. That's it? Now, there's a time saver with your elevation zero for 200 yards. Once you've got it, and you're sure of it, you can make a permanent adjustment of your range scale for 200 yards. But let me warn you, this is a ticklish business. You're not to make this adjustment except with the authority of your platoon leader and under supervision of an oncom. For instance, in the problem we just did, you found the correct elevation for your rifle at 200 yards, to be only four clicks. But that was with the imaginary rifle we were dealing with, mind you. Now, with your rifle, you may find the zero to be seven, 12, or 15 clicks. Whatever the number is, be sure that your elevating knob is set that many clicks from the bottom. Then, Loosen the screw you see there in the middle of the elevating knob. Move the scale so that it's set for 200. Tighten the screw again and be sure it's tight. If it's not, you'll lose your elevating knob. That's how you set your correct 200 yard elevation for keeps. But remember, that's for 200 yards only. You have to zero separately for 300 and 500 yards. All of your zeros are important. Let me say it again. Write them in your scorebook and learn them by heart. That scorebook can be a lot of help to you if you use it right. Look through it. If you get rusty on the elevation and windage rules, here they are with tables and examples that show you how they work. Here are the dimensions of A and B and D targets. Here are windage diagrams too. They show the correct allowances to make for winds of various velocities all around the clock for the two, three, and 500 yard ranges. But I don't want you to get the habit of depending on the book for wind allowances. Shooting at targets is only your training for the bigger job you'll be doing later. And you don't take a scorebook into combat. First of all, of course, the scorebook is for keeping track of your scores and how you made them. Turn to the rifle recording sheet. Take one that's headed 200 and 300 yards, slow fire recording sheet. And I'll go through it and show you how to use it. All right, place. Give the name of your post, camp, or station. In this case, Fort Benning. Then, today's date, the hour, wind velocity, say 10 miles, from 7 o'clock. The light is bright, weather warm, range 200. And you'll do your first firing from the prone position. You'll fill in all those spaces before you go to the firing line. Okay, let's say you're ready to begin zeroing. 
For 200 yards, you'll start with 10 clicks of elevation. Turn your elevating knob all the way down. Then up 10 clicks. Now for windy. You've got a 10 mile wind from seven o'clock. That's two for 200 yards times 10 for the wind velocity divided by 10, which gives you two. But you only take half of that for seven o'clock, which is one. One click left windage because the seven o'clock winds from your left. Write these settings down. Position, sight picture, trigger squeeze, all correct. So. You fire your first shot. You call a center five. And immediately make a dot in the center of the little circle under call in your scorebook. The call is important. Don't forget to put it down. Now, your discs are three at eight o'clock. Enter the actual hit on the M1 target in your scorebook. Number it one because it's your first shot and you've got to keep track. Then mark the score in the value column under Val. A three. Now, adjust your sight. The chances are you won't get a perfect setting the first time, but make your correction. Use your target dimension. From the center to the edge of the bowl is five inches. Say this hit is six inches long. So you'll want three clicks more of elevation. That's your original 10 clicks and three clicks more. So 13 clicks is the elevation you'll use for your second shot. Put it down and change your setting. Now, I estimate that this hit is 12 inches to the left of center. At 200 yards, it'll take six clicks right. Now, you started with one click of left windage. And your corrected setting, when you've turned your wind gauge six clicks right from the one click left, will be five clicks right. Put that down in your scorebook. But you've got to check it before you can be sure. So, you fire your second shot. And again, call a center ball. But, it's a four at two o'clock. It's one inch above the black and seven inches to the right of center. So you have to come down three clicks of elevation to bring the next hit down six inches. That's three clicks from 13. And you're back at your original 10 clicks of elevation for 200 yards. Now you've got to bring the hit seven inches to the left. That'll be four clicks left windage. Make that correction. Your setting was five clicks right. When you move four clicks left, your setting is one click right. With this new setting, see what your third shot shows. Say this time, you call a four at two o'clock. And your disc a four at two o'clock. Well, that's fine. Your shot hit where you called it. You made your correction, and checked, and corrected again, and checked once more to make sure you were right. So now, you can write your zeros in your scorebook. Elevation zero, put down the setting you had when you hit where you aimed. Ten clicks. Zero windage is the setting you need to make your shot hit where you call it if there's no wind blowing. You took one click left windage for a 10 mile wind at seven o'clock. But your final setting, when your shot did hit where you called it, was one click right. The correction you had to make then was two clicks to the right of your wind setting. The windage you take for the wind that's blowing is not part of your zero. If the wind died down, you'd have to take off those clicks and you'd have your zero windage setting because that's the setting you need for a dead calm. Now, if there had been no wind, and your wind gauge would have been centered. So, your correction would have been two clicks to the right of center. 
And that's your zero windage. Two clicks right. Put it down in the space provided for it. Under the M1 target. Two clicks right. And now you're ready to fill out your rifle recording sheet. Put down your rifle number, the ammunition lot number from the base of one of your cartridges you were using, zero elevation for 200 yards, and zero windage for 200 yards. One last word on zeroing. Make sure your call is right. And always mark it in the call circle. Call what you see the instant the rifle fires. And you'll be on your way to making a good shot. This is my last talk to you before this company goes out on the range. I've tried to give you everything I know that will help make good riflemen of you. And I hope I've made things clear. This is all stuff you're going to need later on. You're going to need it for your final examination, and you're going to need it when you go out on the range to shoot for scores. Most of all, you can need it when your training's finished and you're in the big show, where every miss is costly, and every hit means that your country has one less enemy. Thank you.